go. Okay, video nurse is back here talking about five things that people do that could kill them. So number two, after people, something that they don't do, number one was don't read labels and you don't read their prescriptions carefully. Okay, so there are things that can trip you up really badly. Everything from just getting a little bit sick to actually dying if you eat something that you're allergic to or you take a prescription medication, mix it with the wrong thing, or don't take it correctly, and that kills you that way. So, so much drama. Uh, number two, probably not expected, but it has been in the news quite a lot, is the overuse of tanning beds. Did you guess that one? Yes. That can lead to melanoma or skin cancer. Well, the way you detect if you have a skin cancer is usually the area that got a serious sunburn um, starts doing some interesting things like turning different colors, forming um, small nodules, blisters that break open, or growing, uh, you know, something that's unusual in terms of its formation of the skin, uh, darkening and pigmentation. Um, and then just looking strange. It can either blister, bleed, um, get inflamed, and that's usually what uh, tells somebody, I need to go to a dermatologist and take a look at this. Then it can be biopsied and they can find out um, if it's a cancer. So there's a number of different studies that I was taking a look at. Um, you know, unfortunately, you can't just go to the tanning bed companies themselves and just look at. Uh, any research that's been done by them because, hey, it's a conflict of interest. Of course they would like to say that it's safe. Uh, some of the facts that we know is that the UVA rays are the ones that turn us golden brown and the sun has those. The UVB rays um, are actually some of the f kind of friendly uh, rays that we need. We need that for vitamin D absorption. People cannot live without sunlight just like plants can't live without sunlight neither can people. Um, but indoor tanning beds tend to be uh, very top heavy on those UVA rays because those are the rays that are going to make their clients get brown and that's why they're coming in. Um, so what exactly is considered overuse of tanning beds? Uh, overuse, uh, from a couple different articles I gleaned that they suggest about 100 hours per year in the UVA and UVB enhanced beds. So these are the newer ones. They're higher power. They usually come in three settings. It'll be something like, you know, kind of regular or lower power and uh, sort of super or a mega uh, setting. And those are usually for longer periods of time and you risk getting burns with those if your skin is not ready for it. But then on top of that, if you already have a health history in your family, if you're light skinned, um, come from countries where you're in a higher uh, latitude. Your skin's going to be more sensitive to these rays, have less melanin to protect you from them, and your risk factor for getting a melanoma is higher. Okay. Uh, does it matter at what age that you start tanning or using tanning beds? Here's the surprise answer. Um, across the board, the answer was no. It really didn't matter what age you started, but the number of years of use does. So obviously, um, that's the bigger factor. If you've been using tanning beds for you know ten years versus somebody using it for one year, you know it's going to make a difference. And that's a little bit like smoking. You know, the longer you smoke, the worse the effects are. That the higher chances are in risk for things like you know lung cancer or throat cancer or mouth cancers, right? With smoking. Um, so one thing I wanted to bring up, though, about the overuse of tanning beds is you know, one of the things I've, I've cautioned people about is what happens if you live in an area of the world that doesn't get a lot of sunlight during the year. For example, I live in Washington State, and everybody who comes into mm -hmm. my office, I ask them that they've been evaluated for a vitamin D deficiency. I just assume all of us are struggling with it because we don't get enough sunlight here to activate the vitamin D um, absorption in our guts. So we need the UVB rays. And so, could you use a tanning bed um, as a substitute? And 
the answer back from that is possibly, but not likely. Now here's the reason. Possibly if you went to a modern tanning salon and found out what the settings were for the UVB rays and were able to select those and get, um, say, a seven minute exposure a couple of times a week during the worst uh, winter months when there's not that much sunlight, that would probably make you feel better and get that vitamin D absorption if you got those UVB rays to keep you from being depressed because we know that depression kills. And you know, which one are you going to choose? Not using indoor tanning because it's the only thing that you have available of some kind of UVB ray to ward off depression that isn't responding to say other forms of therapy such as psychotropic medication. So, you know, in a kind of entertaining way, I'd just like to say, would you like to be or would you like to be um, a little bit tanner, get as much UVB as you can, and then reduce your risk by not using 100 hours? You know, you don't have to overdo it, seven minutes at a time. You're not even going to you know, break the bank. You're not even going to hit 50 hours at that rate because it's usually just for a couple of months out of the year. Um, so, you know, your option is to, one, equip yourself with some information. Find out what places might have some of these beds. Ask questions. Don't just get underneath those bulbs. Um, and know that some places change out their bulbs faster than others. And if they're new, brand new bulbs and they're on a high setting, you're setting yourself up for, you know, getting hurt and getting burned. Okay, Delton, let me stop this and I'll answer your question.